Hi, I'm Mike. You only have one hometown, and no matter where you go or what you do, it's going to be there waiting for you. For our family, it's Gillette, Wyoming. We ranch south of town, and although the town of Gillette has been through many ups and downs over the last hundred years, just like the ranch, it still stands. And today we take a look at how Gillette and the ranch managed from Cowtown to Coal Town to Boomtown on our Wyoming life. <laughs> Welcome back to Our Wyoming Life. Over the past few months, we've dedicated one video per month to looking at the history of the ranch, how we came here, how those before us got here, and now we get to look at how this area has thrived over the years and how living in a boom town has affected ranching, our ranches, and our family. Thanks for coming back and joining us once again. If you haven't done so, please consider subscribing and helping us take you along as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. These history videos that we've been doing have really started to mean a lot to me. Not only do we get to share with you the history of the area that we live in and that we call home, but we also get to show you why it's important to us. One thing that's really hard to convey over video is the connection to the land that you feel when you're working it out here. It's something that's not so easy to explain. In fact, my father-in-law Gilbert loved this place like no other, and I'm not even sure he could have explained the why. The purpose of these videos was to hopefully be able to show you why we choose to be here, why we just don't sell, pack it up and leave, even if it was to go do the same thing somewhere else. And through this series, I've learned more about this land, the area that we call home, and it ties me here even more. And I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to do just that and share it with you. Gillette is a city located in Campbell County, Wyoming. The ranch we live on is only 12 miles south of town, although when Gilbert was born in 1929, it might as well have been 100 miles out of town. Gilbert was born in this hospital in town at a time that the town boasted a population of just over 1,000 people and it was over his lifetime that he saw Gillette grow, explode, and sometimes implode. His family had homesteaded about 10 miles north of Gillette in an area that is now surrounded by coal mines. He attended school at a one-room schoolhouse where his mom taught before heading into town for high school where he graduated in 1947. And although Gilbert was a cattleman at heart, it wasn't long before another resource began taking over Campbell County. Campbell County is smack dab on top of the Powder River Coal Field, an area larger than the state of Connecticut and is one of the largest coal deposits in the world. And as far back as the early 20s, it was being mined. Here at the Homestake Coal Deposit, the mining of coal goes on spring, summer, fall, and winter. Coal for Homestake light, power, and heat Hundreds of tons of dirt are removed daily to expose the age-old bed of coal. And then, deep down into the bed of coal, nearly a hundred feet, goes the charge of explosive. There go thousands of tons of coal, one of nature's greatest servants harnessed for the use of man. Machinery for loading the coal onto endless conveyor belts, for transporting it to the tipple or sorting bin on the surface. Machinery for transforming it into power. Every day, 350 tons of coal roll out of the mine and into the chutes. Coal for light, power, and heat. The Wyadak mine was the first in the area and originally supplied coal exclusively to gold operations in the Black Hills of South Dakota. It still operates today, now producing some of the cleanest, low sulfur coal in the world for domestic energy generation. As of today, it's the oldest continually operating surface coal mine 
in the United States. And by the time Gilbert was in his mid-20s, things were really beginning to change in Campbell County as coal production became more and more prevalent and desired. But by the mid-60s, it was a byproduct of coal that brought real change to Gillette in the form of oil development. The city's population doubled from 3,500 to almost 7,000 overnight as oil companies rushed into the area to strike deals with local landowners and cattlemen alike to drill for oil. Money flowed into a city that at that time had only two paved roads along with people. Unfortunately, the area wasn't ready for it. Booms are very much unexpected and the massive influx of workers into the area created a major challenge for those in charge. A town that was busting at the seams with a population of 3,500 all of a sudden had to house thousands more. Man camps were set up, trailer houses were moved in, and most without any regard for safety or regulations. Soon, Gillette became known as one of the roughest towns west of the Mississippi. Crime went through the roof, costs of living skyrocketed, and it was a time that many locals started locking their doors and became worried about the future of Gillette. Crime rates raised, doubled or tripled, and you can't leave your car out in the front. We have friends down there. They come steal his spare tire off in these cars standing right in front of his house. I once talked to Gilbert about this time in Gillette's history. The first big boom to a town that was used to shipping out millions of metric tons of coal per year. He told me that over that time the area got a lot of bad press. An article in Playboy magazine in 1982 spotlighted the fact that Gillette sported a ratio of about 50 men to every woman in town. Uh, there was an incident where a 22-year-old electrician hijacked a 47-ton Caterpillar bulldozer and ran amok over, 20, over a 20-block 20 area crushing cars and telephone poles and eventually buildings. But he also told me that Gillette thrived on change. And for a boom town, that certainly is the truth. But it's also what stayed the same, what was important. Coal mining started here in 1924 with the Wyadak mine, but it was in the 70s and 80s when it really began to thrive. It was then that Gilbert's family's original homestead property was found to have coal underneath it. The coal mine bought the property from Gilbert, which allowed him to buy the ranch that we live on today, about 25 miles away. Of the top 10 coal mines in the world, Campbell County holds three of them. Gillette now calls itself the energy capital of the nation after supplying almost 40% of the energy in the form of coal over the past 30 years. Coal has never been considered a boom industry here. It's become part of the backbone of the city and the county, and even through ups and downs, it still remains. Coal brings families to our community allows the infrastructure to be built to support those families and forms a community that now one in ten workers in Campbell County are tied to. But the booms still come. The latest in the form of coal bed methane. This boom possibly affected cattle ranchers of the area more than any other, including Gilbert's new ranch. The oil bust came in the 80s and a few companies began buying oil and gas leases in the hopes of future play. Everybody knew there was natural gas here, methane, under the ground, in the coal seams permeating Campbell County, but nobody knew how much. Methane gas was formed in the coal below, and a small handful of oil and gas operations were playing with the idea of safely removing the methane from the coal seams. The American Oil and Gas Company was the first to get it to pay off, however, when in the 90s, they sold their gas fields only a few miles from the ranch for a total of $40 million and set off one of the biggest booms in Wyoming history. Repurposed water well rigs tapped into the coal seams, removing water, separating natural gas from it, and presto, money in the making. Big and small players rushed into the area and at one time more than 100 different operators were drilling in Northeast Wyoming. Over the next 10 years, 24,000 methane wells were drilled. But like most booms, this one burned off quickly too. And although many ranchers whose land titles traced back to the Homestead Acts and other federal land laws did earn substantial royalties from their production of coal bed methane, 
including Gilbert, on our ranch. During that time, some cattlemen in our area reduced herd sizes, seeing new income from methane, and rethought their entire operations. But soon, like I said, the boom was over, and it was back to business, and back to ranching. Methane companies abandoned over 3,000 well sites when the supply went dry. Some ranchers saw the coal bed methane boom as a hindrance to their land. Others saw it as a godsend, saving cash-strapped ranches. It was long before our time here, but I can say that it's all the booms, the busts, the coal, and the cow town that got us to where we are today. And thankful to be able to share our story and our life. Everybody's history has segments that they're not proud of, but it's those that make us who we are today, from one person to an entire community. There's a poem that we dug up in the museum uh, that's actually written by one of our neighbors. Gillette, the old cow town, where the sagebrush spreads for miles around. From the Pumpkin Buttes to Old Montan, Campbell County is a busy land and to the place where strangers meet, Gillette, Wyoming, the county seat. The wind blows and the water's bad. They have more people than they've ever had. The folks voted out a brand new school with teachers lounge and a swimming pool. Trailer homes reach from ridge to ridge. Mosquitoes nest on the fishing bridge. Oil rigs stand where the antelope roam. Natives here will just call it home. From the Wilson store to the center bar, it makes no difference who you are. The roughnecks work with sweat and toil to get that black stuff we call oil. The oil is here and the coal is too, and probably will stay for a year or two. The trail herds traveled the river roads, now derrick trucks haul their heavy loads. The chamber says the commerce is good, the tourists keep coming like we knew they would. And when the boom is over and things slow down, it's still Gillette, the old cow town. Thanks for coming along today. And I invite you to once again subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss one little thing. Even though the temperature is dropping rapidly, things are heating up and there's rarely a dull moment on the ranch. Join us this week as we continue along with the project list. Our Thursday live stream is coming up on Thursday night at 7 p.m. and so much more on Facebook and Instagram. Of course, I'd like to thank the City of Gillette and the Rockpile Museum for all their help researching this video and the pictures and video that went along with it. If you'd like to support projects just like this one, you can do it on our Patreon page. The link is down below. Until I see you again, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.